This video is for AP Stats, section 7.2. We're in means and variances of random variables, and I'm doing problem 7.46, and we'll do 7.47, and we'll talk about it, how to do it uh, out of our AP Stats book. Um, both of these problems, you have to think about rules 1 for means and for variances. Um, so rule 1, remember, talked about the mean of a transformation either went up by as in was added or subtracted by whatever that value of a would be or you and or you multiply whatever the mean was by a constant b uh, so if the mean of a sample was well, the mean of a, a random variable was 4. If you want to add 5 to that, to that mean, the mean of the transformation of the random variable would be 9. If you want to multiply by 2, then it would be 8. 2 times, sorry, because it was 4. Okay. Uh, with the variance, it's slightly different. Uh, we have to pull out something that we talked about in first semester. The variance of a linear transformation is just that constant squared times the variance of the random variable x. Remember from chapter 1 that whatever the a was for a mean matters because that would shift that whole distribution up. For a variance, shifting everything up doesn't change how far it's spread. So in here when we're looking at variance of a random variable, Whatever the A is doesn't matter because that's not going to change that variance. Remember, variance is resistant to to change or resistant to adding. All right, so let's look closer at seven point four six. So this is glass act one, and the process for manufacturing glassware: glass stems are sealed to heating, sealed by heating them in a flame. The temperature of the flame varies a bit. Here's the distribution of X measured in degrees Celsius. And I'm going to get that down real quick. All right, so there's a distribution. We have one, two, three, four, five outcomes as the temperature and a probability for each of those. Looking at it briefly to make sure it's legitimate, I see 0.25 and 0.25 be 0.5. That gives it to 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1, so that's good to go. They all add up to 1. If we're going to find the mean of x, or mean of the temp, remember we just take those outcomes, multiply them by their probabilities. There's not a dividing step when you do a mean this way because the dividing that you would do is, is kind of already in the fact that these probabilities are ratios. And so they kind of have the dividing built in. I'm going to pause this for a second and figure out what that answer was. Okay, that came out to 550 exactly when I did it. Remember the variance squared? I'm pulling this exactly out of the summary on page 426 if you needed to skip over and look, is you take that number, you take each outcome in the probability distribution, subtract it from the mean, square that, and then multiply it by the probability. So like for the first one, we'll do 540 minus 550 squared times 0 0.1 plus 545 minus 550 squared times 0.25. I'm going to finish setting that up and then calculate it and I'll see you back in a second. Okay, I've got all my outcomes of x inputted here. I've got my mean is 550 consistently across there. Uh, on this next step I'm going to do the squaring, the subtraction and the squaring real quick and then I'll 
after I pause it, I'll do the multiplying on we'll just see what our variance is. Which will then square root to get the standard deviation, which is what they asked for. Okay, I did this calculation here on the bottom of the screen, and I got the variance to be 32 and a half. When I go ahead and square root that, then the standard deviation is... Come on, square root, where you at? 5.7, roughly. Okay, let's pause and go on number two. The target temperature, or part B, the target temperature is 550 degrees. What is the mean and standard deviation of the number of degrees off target X minus 550? Another way of asking part B where it says, what's asking for the number of degrees off target X minus 550 is just um, how many degrees is the temperature and the distribution away from 550? And what's, how, what's the average of that, of how far that is from the temperature, and what's the standard deviation of how far that is away from the temperature? Um, so I'm going to build another chart here to go along with that. Uh, that first one of 540 is negative 10 degrees away from the target temp, right? And we're going to keep that 0.1. 545 is 5 degrees under. It's not right. It's not right at 5. There we go. With the probability of 0.25 that we just carried over from the original chart. The outcome 550 would be 0 degrees away. And that's 0.3. 555 would be 5 degrees over. Again, that's 0.25. And 560 would be 10 degrees over. Uh, then we'll find this average. So the mean of x minus 550 will be negative 10 times 0.1 plus negative 5 times 0.25 plus 0 times 0.3 plus 5 times 0.25 plus 10 times 0.1 I forgot to fill it in earlier when I calculate that out what the average distance the temperature away from the target temp was, was zero. Um, so then let's do the vary, uh, the standard deviation from that, which means we need to do the variance from that first. So we'll do negative 10 minus zero, which is to be negative 10 squared, times 0 0.1 plus negative 5 minus zero squared, times the 0.25 plus 0 minus 0 squared times 0.3, that's going to be 0, I'm actually just going to skip that one for now plus 5 squared times 0.25 plus 10 squared times 0.1 that's 100 times 0.1 plus 25 times 0.25 plus again the zero that we left in the middle plus 25 times 0.25 plus 100 times 0.1 that's going to equal the variance of the number of degrees off target was 42 and a half which we then square root to get the standard deviation And when I do square root of 42.5, I get 6.52. So the standard deviation is 6.52 degrees away from that target. Uh, which I think is interesting. That's actually higher than just the uh, standard deviation of the, the mean that we looked at on the last slide. Okay, part C. A manager asks for results given in degrees Fahrenheit. The conversion for X in degrees is... This, you've probably done this in science class before. 9 fifths x plus 32. If we're relating it back to our rules, 
that we looked at. Um, this is similar to then um, the mean of ax plus b or a plus bx equals a plus b mu of x and the variance of a plus bx equals, remember, b squared times the variance of x. Remembering, as I said a couple minutes ago, that uh, adding to a variance doesn't change anything. So if our mean is, let's go back, what was our mean? Our mean was 550, like we wanted. Then the mu of 9 fifths x plus 32 will be 32, I wrote that backwards so it would have been switched, 32 plus 9 fifths times 550. I'll pause to calculate. I got 1022 on that. And then sigma squared of 32 plus 9 fifths x will be, I'm going to square the b that we had, multiply it by whatever our variance was. Let's get back and look at what that was. Our variance, remember, was 32.5. 32.5. I need some more space. Nine over five squared would be eighty one over twenty five times thirty two and a half. I'm still gonna need a calculator, so let me pause. Okay, we got the variance of that Fahrenheit change to be one oh five. Remember to get the standard deviation then we need to square root that. Square root of oh, 105.3. Square root of that is 10.26. Right, so we've done part A, part B, part C. Uh, now 747, they required you to, to do some simulation. In continuation of the previous... Uh, previous exercise, describe the details of a simulation you could carry out to approximate the mean temperature and the standard deviation in degrees Celsius. Then carry out your simulation. Are the mean and standard deviation produced from your simulation close to the values you calculated in 746A? Uh, so really just what you need to do is set up your own distribution, your own simulation that follows the same probabilities that they gave us in that chart in 7.46. So here's 7.47, the simulation. Simulation. Remember in 7.46 we had probabilities of 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.25, Point one. And I've said always that when you have probabilities that you need to simulate, then you just are going to do random integer on your calculator. And we're going to do 1 to 100. Because we have 100% that we're trying to break down. And then you just have to assign your probabilities. Um, so 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That would be 10% of the numbers. And then 11, 11 plus 25 is 36, then 37 plus 30 of them would get you to 67, and 68 plus 25 more.
would be 93, and then I ran out of numbers. What did I do? <laughs> Let me pause and think about this for a second. Okay, I figured it out. Uh, on the 25 right here, I had added actually 26 numbers, which then led me to add, uh, actually added 31 there, and then 26 there, which is why I was off. One, two, three numbers when I got to 93. Um, so be careful of that when you are simulating. So, um, law of large numbers. Let's look in your book. How many times should I run this? We're going to get to a section later in our book where it will tell you exactly maybe how many you should run. And that's usually 30. So I'd say run at least 30. To see how this would work out. Now to test that simulation. So instead of doing just random integer 1 to 100. Let me select this so I can add to it. I would not in the parentheses right there, I'd go ahead and choose 30. Nope, I wrote that wrong anyway. 1, comma, 100. Choose 30. And I would store that into a list. And then go and check your list. Look at list 1. And then just see what... Oh, I'd sort it also. Sort A, list 1. Now I just go and look at the list and see what I got. If I got a number returned that was, maybe it said 7, 8, 10, 14, 50, 55, 60, 70. Um, then I look back at what I wrote down over here and just correspond those to the proportions. So in this little thing I just made up, I have two numbers out of my 30 that are in this top category. I have ten, two more in the in the second category there. One, two, three in the point three category, and then one in the point two five. And then it's asking you to make proportions out of that and just compare it to what we did in 7.46.